Good afternoon, everyone. In today's video, we're going to focus on how to trade some of the stimulus volatility that we're currently seeing in the marketplace. Really, that's just another excuse for a catalyst. As long as there's a catalyst, we see volatility in the markets. As long as we see volatility in the markets, we have at least some sort of ranges to trade that volatility. Now, in this video, we'll cover the four major indices one more time. We've been doing this all week. And then I'll also show a couple stocks uh, in regards to trading this volatility that we had today. So we'll look at Pinterest, we'll look at Baidu, we'll look at Farfetch, and we'll also take a look at Dow. All right, so starting off with the futures segment first, uh, we'll start with the S&P futures. Now, most of you should already be well familiar with the setup. In the morning, we started off using our scalper volatility box, given that we were inside our scalper volatility box entry lines. Now, our first entry came as we had price action fall into our entry lines in the subsequent hour after the market's been open. So that's a 7 to 8 a.m. Pacific hour. We were then looking for our overbought oversold indicator, which is the edge signals, which we got right here with this green arrow. Once we had that, the trade was a go with an entry at the cyan line or better we did get an entry at the clouds as well and then once the trade is filled that's pretty much it it's a hands-off trade stop is outside of the volatility box our first target is that same distance which in the case of the s p futures was close to 10 points our second target and the s p futures ended up dropping down just a little bit lower so that was nine points which then moved our second target as well up to 10 points so really t1 t2 at the same level looking for that bare minimum first target and so we got that 10 points along with much much greater of a move right so for those that uh, had more than just the two contracts, you'll notice that we got taken into the first target line that we actually ended up hitting was in the 9 to 10 a.m. Pacific hour. That was a max gain of 17.85 points. Uh, so really around that down to 17.75 points on the S&P. And then we hit the next hour's target line as well, along with the entry line. So that was another 30 points on the S&P. And then from that point, really, once we breached that entry line, this was towards the edge of an hour in which we have really free information. We ended up going outside of the clouds and so that was our sign to then switch over to the aggressive volatility box and this is really the sign in which we saw volatility start to exceed our most aggressive models so that was the s p futures a nice winner right here a uh, pretty small winner 10 points per contract but still a fairly nice winner now if i switch over to the nasdaq futures the nasdaq was a little bit different today similar to yesterday the nasdaq was the one that stopped out compared to the dow the s p along with the russell so if we take a look at that setup here, very similar. The first hour test is respected. We were on our scalper box. We had price action in the NASDAQ fall into our scalper volatility box entry lines. And once we saw the entry line get breached, we were then looking for our edge signal, which also came. We had an opportunity to enter at the cyan lines or better. And in the case of the NASDAQ, we ended up going outside of our clouds. And this time it wasn't really just a wick, right? While it looks like this was a small amount here, in terms of points on the NASDAQ, we ended up going a good 15 or so points outside of our stop. And so that's where I think this was just a decisive stop. There was no two ways around this. This was a stop on the NASDAQ in which uh, that trade ended up costing us a uh, in which that trade ended up costing us right around 47 points per contract. Now, if you contrast this, however, with something like the Dow, so the S&P was a winner, the NASDAQ was a loser. The Dow here, you'll see another nice winner, right? We had a breach of our sign lines. We had an edge signal confirmation multiple times. Opportunity to enter at the sign lines are better. This time, you ended up getting not only T1, but also T2, which was at this gray target line. And so that was a fairly nice gain to give you an idea of what that looked like on the Dow. On the Dow, that was a gain of 77 points per the first target, really rounded up to 80. Uh, and then our second target was a little bit further away, right around 100 points. And so both T1 and T2 were hit almost right away, so very little heat on this trade. Then keep going forward, very similar to the S&P futures, we saw another breach, and this time again towards the edge of an hour. This time free information looking to see, do we hold these levels? Which you'll notice in that final uh, couple hours of the market, we ended up going outside of our volatility box clouds, which then switches us over to our aggressive clouds no entry off of the aggressive so so far uh, especially from the trades that we've discussed the S&P was a winner off of the scalper the Dow was a winner off of the scalper the Nasdaq was a loser off of the scalper now keep going forward to the gold or sorry not the gold excuse me the Russell futures markets but you'll notice the gold futures markets also look fairly interesting via the scalper but we'll focus on the four indices along with some stocks so now the Russell here we had very similar again another breach of our volatility box entry lines an edge signal an opportunity to at the cyan line or better here much much cleaner action right we ended up hitting t1 and t2 to give you an idea of what that looked like this was a much lower risk trade compared to the other indices only 4.7 points on 
the Russell for our first target. Second target was 9.5 points away with the break-even stop. Ended up hitting that, and we saw a really nice move up higher in the Russell, where really from this point, this was your absolute best point to try and catch any sort of reversal. You had a positive 27.8 point move into the close, and it's still up even higher into after hours activity. So those were the four major indices. Now let's say you don't trade either the four major indices or perhaps you trade stocks instead. Then we had trades set up in uh, markets like Pinterest, Farfetch, uh, Baidu, Dow. So let's take a look at some of those trades as well. So first, I'll come in here. I'll show you what the levels look like via our dashboard here. So I have Baidu, Dow, Farfetch, and Pinterest. Uh, you can take a look to see what the long entry looked like. So on Pinterest, that long entry was 48.63. On Farfetch, that was 27.65. On Dow, that was 48.18. And then in Baidu, that was 130.89. Now let's take a look to see what this looked like on our actual chart. So we can go ahead and generate a, a volatility box indicator file here. So we'll say Farfetched. Uh, Baidu, Dow, and then pins, and then we can generate this, download in the aggressive volatility box study, and I can go ahead and uh, import this indicator into Thinkorswim. All right, so we'll start with Pinterest first here, which you'll notice Pinterest was really a picture perfect trade, right? And this is especially for those of you that are looking to build up a longer term position in Pinterest, uh, really as part of your portfolio. We had Snapchat really kill earnings. That may also lead you to believe that Pinterest is going to also uh, have a very similar earnings season here. We had price action fall into our volatility box entry lines. That's the clouds right here. Once we see that, we're looking for an edge signal confirmation, which we got right here. And after that, the trade is a go. So we're looking for an entry at the clouds are better. Our stop is outside of our volatility box clouds, which again, if I pull in our uh, dashboard here, that should give you some more concrete levels uh, just in terms of measuring the actual price action. So you'll notice in Pinterest, our stop was outside of 48.27, the long stop, right? That also lines up right here, 48.27, ended up going down to 48.29 before having a pretty nice reversal, which then if you take a look, we ended up hitting our first target almost right away, came back down. This, if you moved your stop to break even, you got taken off right here. You had multiple retests, but to give you an idea for those of you that really look at adding uh, stocks from the stock volatility box for longer term positions here from our entry line in Pinterest. Pinterest ended up closing close to a positive 4.49% up higher. And that's really the power of the volatility box is catching some of these really nice reversal moves, especially in stocks that really you just don't mind holding anyways. Now, if we switch gears, something similar here should also be far fetched. So very similar to Pinterest here, we had price action breach our volatility box lines. Once we breached, we were looking for an edge signal. We got the edge signal, but never had an opportunity to re-enter at the clouds are better and so fetch was one in which you didn't have the rules met but i thought it was still interesting to call out since i know it's a stock that's been hyped up a lot it's on a lot of folks's radars uh, you see it in almost all sorts of stock uh, picking uh, newsletters here and again a stock that i think would be on a lot of people's radars here you have really a nice opportunity to enter at the edge with a price that was arguably one of the better prices for the rest of the day especially if you're looking to hold this for a longer term period now we keep switching on on. The next one that I'll talk about is Baidu. Now, Baidu should look very similar to uh, Pinterest here, where we had price action breach our volatility box sign entry lines. You then had multiple edge signals along with an opportunity to enter at the clouds are better. Ended up hitting our first target right off the bat, right, which is our great target line. Again, to give you an idea of what that looks like, the target was 131.37. Uh, and then after that, stop has moved to break even, where into the close here, you'll notice we ended up going a positive 1.63% from our actual entry. So another beautiful trade in Baidu. And then finally, I'll contrast this with a loser, which was in Dow. Uh, and this is Dow Inc. We had earnings today. And usually with earnings, we're looking at using our conservative volatility box, which I can go ahead and plot as well. But right here, we have our aggressive volatility box plotted for those of you that were looking to try and catch a little bit more of an aggressive reversal. That's where we had price action breach our volatility box clouds. You had three edge signals, which should have given you the confidence that, hey, we're expecting a move at least to our target line. And instead, we ended up going outside of the clouds. And so this right here, once we break outside of the clouds, this is the stop out in Dow. Now, if I load in our conservative volatility box as well, let me go ahead and input that. Now, if you take a look via the conservative box as well here, via the conservative box, we ended up breaching our clouds right here. Once we breached the clouds, we're looking for an edge signal. And unfortunately, we never got, or actually, fortunately, rather, we never got an edge signal until we broke outside of the clouds there. And so this kept you out of, I think, the bad trade. The only valid trade here was the aggressive volatility box cloud, which also was a stop out. So that was a trade in Dow, but that was contrasted also with 
with Pinterest, uh, Baidu, Farfetch, some pretty nice reversals there, along with markets like the S&P, the Dow, which gave you some nice winners, along with the Russell, but then a loser in the NASDAQ futures. Now, again, I've been talking about this, uh, I think, throughout this entire week. We have not only the election volatility, but also the stimulus volatility, really a lot of catalysts to give you some really nice opportunities to try and catch some of these fade opportunities, some of these nicer reversals in the marketplace. And we have uh, the machine doing much of the work for us with both our uh, stock volatility box with the live scanner, along with our futures volatility box, we have the dashboard, which alerts us whenever we have new trade opportunities. All right, hope this video helps. Take care, everyone. Good luck trading the final day of this week, and we'll see you in the next update.